A very pleasant morning to everyone. It's long time since we met for online classes. I'm sure you're all keeping well. And uh, I hope you did your uh, midterm examination also well. Uh, let's not waste much time. We shall begin the classes straight away. I'm sure all of you are aware of the sad demise of the former Chief Minister of Assam, Tarun Gogoi. It is time for us to pay tribute to the great leader who has served the state of Assam for three consecutive terms. So let's try to know something about him before we pay respect by maintaining silence for a minute and praying for his repose. So Darun Kogai was an Indian politician who served as the Chief Minister of Assam from 2001 to 2016. He was a member of the Indian National Congress and led the party to a record three consecutive electoral victories and was the longest serving Chief Minister of the state. He was born on 1st April 1936 at Jorhat and he died yesterday, 23rd November 2020 at Gauhati Medical College and Hospital. And he was married to a person called Dolly Gogoi, who was a postgraduate uh, holder in zoology in 1972. And they were gifted by God with two lovely children called Gaurav Gogai and Chandrima Gogai. And as I told you, you held the office of a chief minister for three consecutive terms. Let's know something about his political career. Gogoi started his political career as a member of the municipal board at Jorhat in 1968 before he was being elected to the 5th Lok Sabha in 1971 from Jorhat. He represented Jorhat in Lok Sabha through the next two terms until 1985. He represented Kaliabar in the 10th Lok Sabha between 1991 and 1996 and the 12th and 13th Lok Sabha between 1998 and 2001. He quit the 13th Lok Sabha midterm to assume office as the Chief Minister of Assam in 2001, serving a total of six terms as a member of the parliament. And during his second term in the Lok Sabha, he was elected as a Joint Secretary of All India Congress Committee, AICC, in 1976, under the Prime Minister Indira Gandhi. He later served as the General Secretary of the AICC from 1985 to 1990 under Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi. He served in the Union Cabinet of Indian under Prime Minister P.V. Narasimha Rao as a Union Minister of State in the Ministry of Food Processing Industries between 1991 and 1996. He was a member of the Committee on Government Assurances, Consultative Committee, Union Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas and Committee on External Affairs in the 10th Lok Sabha. In the 13th Lok Sabha, he was a member of the Committee on Railways. He served as a President of the Assam Pradesh Congress Committee, APCC, between 1986 and 1990, before being appointed as a President again in 1996. Uh, through the... Through the state legislative career, he served four terms as a member of the Legislative Assembly, MLA. He first represented at Magirtha, Magirtha constituency between 1996 and 1998 and Titabar constituency since 2001. And he was elected Chief Minister of Assam in 2001 after leading the Indian National Congress to victory in the Legislative Assembly elections and led the party to record three consecutive electoral victories in the state. Emerging as the longest serving Chief Minister of the state in a tenure from 2001 to 2016. Stemming from dissent within the party that saw 32 MLAs resign, he could not get the International Congress to victory in 2016 Legislative Assembly elections. Thus, Sarvananda Sonarwal from the Bharati Janata Party went to win the elections and became a successor. So having heard a lot of information about the late a veteran politician and leader of uh, Assam uh, belonging to Indian National Congress. Uh, we shall stand wherever we are and pay one minute of respect by observing silence and praying for the late leader. God has blessed us with another day and today is a Wednesday and I wish you all a very happy Wednesday. And when you look at the date, 25th November, I want to remind you, we don't have much time left as we are nearing the deadline for your board exam about the date, when, how, etc. is not known to me till date. When the informations come, I shall pass on the information to you. 
until then we shall think that our deadline is very near and therefore uh, please cooperate with me in the coming days so that we uh, try to complete the portion as good as possible and we will finish the portions and the offline classes will commence once the local district administration gives a green signal for us to resume our offline classes for class 9 and 10. Beginning the day in prayer is always a sign that we are surrendering the day into the hands of God and asking him to lead us all through the day. So let's all join us in prayer. A student's prayer by St. Thomas Aquinas. Creator of all things, true source of light and wisdom, origin of all being, graciously let a ray of your light darkness of my understanding. Take from me the double darkness in which I have been born and obscurity of sin and ignorance. Give me a keen understanding, a retentive memory and the ability to grasp things correctly and fundamentally. Grant me the talent of being exact in my explanations and the ability to express myself with thoroughness and charm. Point out the beginning, direct the progress and help in the completion. I ask this. In the name of Almighty. Amen. We are all fortunate in a sense to live in the technological millennium whereby we see a big boom in the technological advances, advancement. But on the other hand, we are unfortunate that we are, we are unaware of the traditional practices that were followed by our parents, our foreparents, our people who lived in the past. And one of a very important practices that people of the past practice is writing a diary. So let me explain to you what is a diary and what is called a diary writing. The word diary comes from the Latin diarium, which means daily allowance. The word journals comes from the same root diernus, which means of the day and to the old French word journal. The oldest extant diaries come from Middle Eastern and East African cultures, although the even earlier work to myself, today known as the Meditations, written in Greek by the Roman Emperor Marcus Aurelius in the second half of the second century AD, already displays many characteristics of a diary which means the oldest diary that we can refer was written by Emperor Marcus Aurelius in the 2nd century AD, which has certain characteristics of a diary writing. What is a diary writing? Diary is a form of autobiographical writing, a regularly kept record of the diarist activities and reflections. And it is written primarily for the writer's use alone. The diary has a frankness that is unlike writing done for publication. In other words, it is just a record of one's private feelings, emotions and reflections on daily experiences that one goes through. And it is primarily meant for the use of the writer uh, in which the writer uh, expresses things in a frank way and it is not meant for publication. It is a private thing. That's why it's called diary writing. So having learned what is a diary and what is diary writing, let us get back to the lesson of the day. The title of the lesson is very clear. The Diary of a Young Girl by Annie Frank. Let's, before we enter into the lesson, it's good to know about the author and uh, the name of the author is very clear from the title. Annie Frank is the author. Annie Frank was born in the year 1929 and she died in 1945. She was a Jewish girl whose diary recounting her experiences during her family's two years in hiding during the German occupation of the Netherlands became a literary classic. It was on July 6th, 1942. Anne's family went into hiding in her father Otto Frank's backroom office and warehouse. With the help of a few non-Jewish friends, food and other necessary supplies were smuggled in to keep them going. 
four other jews also hid with frank family in the secret annex on august 4th 1944 however acting on a trip from dutch informers the gestapo discovered them of the family otto frank survived the holocaust friends who searched the hiding after the family's arrest later gave him some papers left behind by gestapo among them was ann's diary and his diary which he published as annie frank the diary of a young girl in 1947 mature and articulate it relates ann's emotional growth during the hardest of times in the diary ann fam- famously wrote i still believe in spite of everything that people are really good at heart i repeat ann wrote in a diary and this is one of her famous quotes saying i still believe in spite of everything that people are really good at heart and the most widely read record of the holocaust and and is probably the most famous of its victims so this is in just about the author so let me now introduce the lesson this lesson is an excerpt from the diary of a young girl or the diary of annie frank it is an autobiography that was first published in 1947 In this Anne expresses her thoughts in a diary which was gifted to her on her 13th birthday. She names the diary Kitty which she considers has her only true friend. She mentions about her childhood, her family and a lot of other things that she told no one else. I will not be doing the model reading and uh, therefore please it is we don't have time and therefore you are requested to read the textbook on your own. Uh, let me move on with the the new words and the explanation of the text proper uh, if you read the first few paragraphs you'll come across uh, one new word called musings a uh, musings means a period of reflection or thought musings means a period of reflection or thought so in this paragraph what does any frank try to communicate to us The author feels that it is a strange it is strange and unusual for her to write in a diary about her feelings and experiences because it was the first time she was doing it because normally we express our feeling to the person who is living with us living around us our friends our parents our relatives our well wishes but this is the first time she is expressing her feelings and experiences for the first time and expressing it to a diary she feels this because she thinks that in the future no one would be interested in reading about a young school going girl's past she thinks that later even she will not be interested in reading it but then she puts these thoughts away and decides that she should write if she feels like doing so she feels the need to write because there were a lot of thoughts she had been holding on to lately and she needed to get them off her mind it is known that writing one's thoughts act as therapy i repeat it is known that writing one's thoughts act as a therapy she makes a decision of writing a diary let's move on to the next paragraph and uh, in this paragraph you come across certain new words which i want you to know the meaning the word listless means with no energy or interest listless with no energy or interest brooding means engage in or showing deep thought about something that makes one sad angry or worried prompted means provoke so let me explain the meaning of this paragraph the author feels that paper has much more capacity to absorb the thoughts than people people have low patience patience levels but a piece of paper being a non living thing would not refuse from absorbing her thoughts this realization came to her one day when she was feeling more sad and confused than usual she could not even decide whether to go out or stay at home at the time when she finally decided to stay at home she sat being depressed and in deep thought again she thought that paper had more patience and she decided to write everything that came in her mind because she did not intend on making someone read it unless she found a real friend by real friend she meant a friend with whom she could share all her secrets 
the author then comes back to the point where she thought of beginning to write it is because she is lonely and has no friend to talk to so let's move on to the next paragraph and we find two new words that uh, you need to know the meaning confide means to tell personal things privately to a person that one trusts liable means likely here here likely what is the meaning of this particular paragraph so annie frank then goes on explaining why she feels the need for a friend she feels that no one is going to believe that a young girl like her is so alone which practically she is not because she has a loving family near about 30 people that can be called friends loving aunts and a good place to stay this depicts a clear picture of a happy family but the one thing that lacks in her life is the presence of a true friend with whom she can share everything she does have a good time with friends they talk about stuff but not real stuff that is actually going on in their lives despite trying hard they are unable to get closer she feels that maybe it is her who is not able to trust anyone with her private stuff that she is not able to come any close to her friends she feels that the current situation or scenario cannot be changed and thus she needs to write her feelings in the diary so let's move on to the next paragraph there we find two new words enhance means intensify increase or further improve the quality value or extent of plunge means jump or dive quickly what is the meaning of this particular paragraph usually when someone is writing in a diary they list down all the facts about them in a formal manner which the author does not want to do this is because she wanted to give a need for a friend a shape this is because she wanted to give her need for a friend a shape and thus decides to kitty hoping that someone would read her diary one day she thinks that writing without giving details about the background story would be ineffective so despite not wanting to do so she gives brief details about her life so let's move on to the next paragraph and there we find uh, three new words adorable means lovable cute emigrated means leave one's own country in order to settle permanently in another plunged means to put down so what is the meaning of this particular paragraph and what is the author trying to communicate most lovable father one could get her father married a mother when he was at the age of 36 and she was 25 she and her sister margaret were both born in frankfurt as soon as ann or annie turned 4 her father moved to holland followed by her mother in september while well, both the sisters stayed with their grandmother in Aachen Margaret was also sent to Holland in December followed by Anne in February who was brought as a birthday present for Ma- Margaret So let's move on to the next paragraph and there are certain four words that I would like to explain prior to the explanation Farewell means an act of parting or of making someone's intended means planned solemn means characterized by deep sincerity dedication means commitment so what does the author mean in this two paragraphs that follows in holland annie was sent to montessori nursery school it was a first school she started from first form she had mrs cuperus the headmistress as her teacher in sixth form who even cried at the time of farewell In 1941 the author's birthday could not be celebrated well because her grandmother fell ill and underwent an operation. Unfortunately her grandmother left them in January 1942. Annie misses her grandmother more than any or anyone knows. This year's birthday was to be celebrated with great zeal so as to compensate for the last years. She then mentions that her family is doing well which sums up her background. and brings her to the present date of june 20 1942 when she is writing her diary 
Let's move on to the next paragraph, which has got uh, at least about uh, seven words. Quaking means shake or tremble. Staked means bet, chanced. Pleading means to make an emotional appeal. Glances means take a brief and hurried look. Outburst means a sudden release of strong emotion. Dummies means an object designed to resemble and serve as a substitute for the real or usual one. Unpredictable means not able to be predicted, changeable. What is the meaning of this paragraph? On June 20th, 1942, Annie begins writing in her diary, addressing it as a friend Kitty. She mentioned how it was about their results. It is unpredictable and will be decided by a meeting of teachers in which they will select students to be moved to next class or kept back. Many students were making bets. Some had put in their entire summer savings at stake. She and her friend also made fun of the nervous boys. They kept on saying to each other that I am not going to pass, which others would console them and say, yes, you would. G was polite as she tried to stop them from making noise while Annie scolded them. But none of it worked. According to Annie, about a quarter of class should not be allowed to pass because they hardly respond or take part in any of the activities. She refers to them as dummies. But this may not be the case because teachers' decisions can't be predicted. So let's move on to the next paragraph. It has got uh, four new words and one particular phrase. Uh, not to lose heart means not to be discouraged. Old foggy means an old-fashioned person. Annoyed means slightly angry, irritated. Chatterbox means a person who likes to chatter, talkative. Jotted means to write something quickly. So what's the meaning of these uh, two paragraphs? The author says that she is not bothered about her friends because she is sure that they will pass. The only thing subject that she is unsure about is mathematics. She seems to be having a tough time with the subject, but all they could do was to wait for the results and not to lose their hope. She tells how she has a great relationship with all her teachers except the maths professor. He was constantly irritated by the author's talkativeness. Despite several warnings, Annie did not stop talking in, this class, in, a, in his classes, which prompted him to give her extra homework as punishment. The first one thing was to write an essay on Chatterbox, which she thought was a weird topic to write on because what could one write about that? For the moment, she wrote the topic in her notebook, kept it in her bag and focused on staying quiet. Let's move on. And now we have about uh, four words that you need to get familiarized with the meaning. Ramble means to talk or write at length in a confused or inconsequential inconse ways. Convincing means capable of causing someone to believe that something is true or real. Trait means quality. Inherited means derived genetic parents or ancestors. What is the meaning of this particular paragraph? The author came across the note that she made a reminder for the essay after she had finished the rest of her homework. She began thinking about the topic while chewing the tip of a fountain pen is a gesture that signifies a person is in deep thinking. While anyone could mention random stuff written for the sake of filling pages, she wanted to present concrete arguments in support of talking. She mentioned that she will try to better herself as a student, but talking is something that cannot be eliminated completely. This is because she got it as an inherited trait from her mother, and this is how she ended up writing three pages on the topic. So in this paragraph, there are uh, three new words that you need to know the meaning. Proceeded means to begin a course of act action. Incorrigible means not able to be changed. Mistress means a woman in a position of authority or control. What is the meaning of this particular paragraph? It means the professor found Annie's arguments to be amusing. But when she did not stop talking in the next lesson also, he gave her yet another assignment as punishment. The topic was an incorrigible chatterbox. Incorrigible refers to a bad habit that is difficult to change. He gave her this topic because he was annoyed of her unstoppable chattering during his lessons. 
On receiving this assignment, the professor did not say anything to her for a while. But when he lost his patience, he handed her yet another assignment as punishment on the topic. Quack, 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 said Mistress Chatterbox. So let's move on to the last two paragraphs. And there are certain words that you need to know the meaning. Roared means laughed. Exhausted means completely used up. Ingenuity means the quality of being clever, original, inventive. Verse means writing arranged in a metrical rhythm, typically having a rhyme. Ridiculous means deserving or inviting derision or mockery, absurd. And there's another word called contrary means opposite in nature, direction or meaning. What is the meaning of these two paragraphs? When the professor scolded her for the third time and punished her, the whole class started laughing. As a result, she had to pretend to be amused too. After writing twice on similar topics, she ran out of thoughts. Thus, a friend, San, who was a good at poetry, offered to help her to write in rhyme. This whole assignment scenario was to make Annie feel ashamed that she made sure that she gave an effective reply. Then she finally wrote a third assignment in the form of a poem, which turned out to be great. She wrote a satire that her father swam bit his three baby ducklings to death because of their noisy nature. She wrote a satire that her father swan bit his three baby ducklings to death because of their noisy nature. To her good luck, the professor took it lightly. The professor recited the entire poem, poem in, in front of the class while giving his own remarks simultaneously. The author being fortunate enough talked uninterruptedly after this incident without any further homework as punishment. Also, Mr. Keezing, the professor started cracking jokes every now and then in front of the class. So we have seen uh, a note about the author and I began to introduce a lesson by way of an introduction and after which I have explained all the paragraph, picking out the new words, giving their meanings and also explaining the meaning of those paragraphs. Now having listened so far for the past 20 to 30 minutes, it's time now to evaluate how much we have understood about this particular lesson. There are certain questions that I have posed for you, so which you need to answer straight away after you see this particular slide. Let me read the questions for you. What is a diary? What do you understand by diary writing? Write the meaning of the following words, musings, brooding, outbursts, staked, enhance. When and where did Annie's family go in for hiding. According to you, do you consider diary writing a good habit? State reasons for the same. Last, write in just the summary of the lesson in 100, in 100 to 200 words. So please do this evaluation, which is very important to check how much you have understood the lesson. Having attempted to evaluate the, the level of our attention that all through the class. Uh, let me just uh, recap and uh, I will not be uh, reading it for you as the music is being played. I would request that this particular slide is read by you slowly. This entire story can be divided into uh, four significant stages, namely the need to write. Secondly, her family migrates to Netherlands. Thirdly, it is results time at school. Third and last, the amusing episode with uh, Mr. Kiesing. So you just read it run it through and that will be a sort of a, a recap for the entire lesson. sure you understood the simple lesson you also understood the meaning of what is the meaning of uh, writing a diary what's the meaning of uh, a diary itself and how uh, 
uh, even in our life at times when we do not find friends uh, we could also have recourse to diaries in which we could write down our feelings our emotions and our reflections which could be very deep and therefore uh, diary is lifeless and it can take in all our emotions without uh, denying chances to hear and the diary becomes a very good source to express and to speak everything that we feel about life about people about uh, situations so thank you for listening god bless you and we meet once again uh, tomorrow uh, in order to continue with the next lesson god bless you bye bye